Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today we're going to be creating a pillow and this is going to be a fun object. It's, um, it's actually very fun to make because there's so much more you can do with the method that we're going to be using to create this. Um, this is just a quick mock-up of the actual object. Um, it's not fantastic by any means, um, but the principles of creating this are still here in this tutorial and the final outcome could definitely be better but it was a rush job. Um, I created this in about 10 minutes. Um, the reason this isn't fantastic, some people might think it's great, but looking at it from a professional type of point of view, um, it's very blown out on the top and that's not very good. We've got some stretching here in the texture, which means we're getting this really hideous bump. You know, it might be hideous, but you could say in some respects it kind of adds a little to the object because pillars aren't perfect in real life. Um, you will have some issues um, depending on how professional it was actually created. Um, you can see there's a seam around here, which I'm actually quite happy with the seam because it really does represent kind of a pillow. Um, most pillows actually have a seam going all the way around which is where they're sewn together in real life. Um, so I kind of like this effect. I do actually, it wasn't intended, but the outcome is actually kind of more realistic than having it hidden. So that's quite cool. Um, so let's actually get on with the tutorial and stop jibber jabbing. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a cube and we're gonna name this cube pillow and you can make this any size you want. It really, really depends on what you want. I'm going to create something similar to what we just saw. So I'm just going to reduce the height to around 50. So the X is 200, the Y is 50, and the Z is 200 also. So I'm going to go up to display and turn on shading lines just so we can see what the lines look like. Now we're going to have to add some more geometry to this object in order for it to deform properly. So on the X axis, I'm going to add 16. That's going to give us a lot of lines across the top here. And I'm also going to add 16 to the Z, which is going to give us a really nice um, equal square pattern on the top and the bottom. We don't add it to the sides because this is going to basically be um, sprung together in the method we're going to use to create this pillow. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a sphere. Now the reason I'm creating a, a sphere is because we need something inside the object to react much like what you would normally find in a pillow. So wool, feathers, just some type of stuffing to keep the shape of the pillow. Because don't forget, think about this realistically, um, what we're creating here isn't the inside of the pillow because we aren't going to see that. We're actually creating the skin and if you go in terms of real life, if you took the stuffing out of the actual skin of the pillowcase, then it's just going to be a bit of fabric on the floor. So we have to think about it in terms of realism. So that's why we're going to be using the sphere in order to kind of simulate the stuffing inside so the pillow can actually hold its shape. So. We're going to select the um, sphere, we're going to go to coordinates and we're going to reduce the Y just so it actually fits inside the actual object. So if we go to the side view you can see that it's actually in there quite well. So maybe we can just up this a little bit, maybe down to about 22 seems fine. I'm also going to reduce the X and Z by 5, that way it just fits in our object. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select both of these and press C on my keyboard. That will make them editable. Now, now that we've got these editable, we need to kind of add the tags to this, which will deform it. Um, so I'm going to click the pillow um, geometry. I'm going to right click, go to simulation and put on a cloth simulation. If we press play, nothing really happens because the tag didn't add. Let me just do that again. There we go. Now if I press play, you'll see it just falls down, which is not what we want. So I'm going to click the sphere, do the same. Instead of adding a cloth tag, I'm going to add a cloth collider. Now what a collider is, it's basically a solid object that doesn't move. So your other tags, such as cloth, will actually interact with that. So if we press play now, you'll see that this object in the middle, the sphere, doesn't move. 
but the cloth pillow will actually interact with it and it'll deform which is what we want so as we can see here let's just increase the timeline a little bit so we can actually just work with this a little bit a little bit better you can see that the long parts here are deforming that's because there's not enough geometry there for it to deform so what we need to do is we need to um, click on the pillow go to the polygon selection use U L and that will bring up the um, loop selection and we'll be able to select all of the polygons on the side which is what we want once we've done that we're going to go to the um, the cloth tag and we're going to go into the dresser and we're going to click down here on seam polys and we're going to hit set and that's going to add little crisscrosses in every single one of these polygons which will basically um, it's telling us that these are actually now set so if we go to dress o -matic and click that you can see it kind of scrunches them together and it actually pulls everything else in forming this lovely shape of a pillow now determining what results you get will determine um, what shape you have inside of this object because if we look it's actually shrunk it in to the sides however it's left these on the corner you're crinkled up which is what we want which is really really cool um, if you want a really thin pillow you can obviously um, change the shape and the size of the sphere which is the object that it's taking the form from and if we go to a side view you can see the exact same thing even though it's not exact it's still keeping the, the contour of the shape which is what we want so once we've done that we want to click on the set initial state and we also want to go on um, dress state select both of these and then when we press play nothing will happen because that's the the shape we want so what we want to do now is we want to delete the tag from the pillow because we don't need that anymore we have the shape we want and all is well so if we render this out you will see it's looking a little bit shabby that's because there's not enough polygons um, to give this a decent shape so with holding alt down I'm going to go over to the icon here which is add hypernerbs click that and click hypernerbs that will drop the pillow into the hypernerbs automatically so we don't have to do another action and if we hit render now you'll see we get somewhat of a really really nice pillow shape really nice so we don't need a sphere anymore as well so we can actually delete that and that's pretty much it so if we wanted to go a little bit further on this which I'm pretty sure most people will to get you know some different results what you want to do now is let's disable the hypernerbs we're gonna create a plane object move this down and we're gonna leave it like that the size of it is fine so I'm gonna right click this object go to simulation and I'm gonna add a collider body tag I'm going to go to the pillar, right click, simulation, soft body tag. So if we press play now, you'll see that this actually deforms quite cool. However, it is actually deflating, which is not what we want. It's not holding its structure and it doesn't really look like a pillar anymore. But what it does look like is a pillar case, which is what you would have without having um, any stuffing inside of this object. So to combat this, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the tag, we're going to go to soft body, and what we need to increase is the stiffness. Now be careful when you're playing with stiffness because um, too much and it can go horribly wrong. So we want to just adjust this slightly and you'll see we've just won in stiffness, it actually goes up quite far. So we want this to be around, personally I think about 10. Um, it depends on what you're doing with this. If you're doing this in an animation, then you might want to up the stiffness. However, if you're using this for a still image, such as a prop for a bed, um, perhaps like visualization, then I think you know the stiffness of 10 could be quite ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to press play, and you'll see it, it goes through. That looks okay. I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to add on the hypernerves and just take a quick render. And I think that looks pretty cool. Now, what if we wanted the pillar to have a slight dint in this object? Well, 
I suppose we could create another sphere. Um, let's reduce the size of this sphere down a, a tiny bit. Bring it up and we will basically add in a rigid body tag. Now if we move this across a little bit and if we hit play, now we're getting some weird because it's intersecting. We've got to make sure that when you add dynamics that they don't intersect. So if we press play now you'll see it actually animates through and that looks pretty cool. Let's turn off the line so we can actually see what's going on. So let's pause it right about there looks pretty cool. So let's turn off the visibility of the sphere. There we go. So now if we render this out, you can see it looks like someone's been sitting on this and it looks quite cool. Um, if you're going for a visualization like a worn pillow or something like that, this could work very well. If the dint is a little bit too much for you, you can go back and go into the pillar options and just increase the stiffness. Let's say maybe 25. Press play. And there we go. So the dint isn't as you know menacing anymore. It's slowly rolling off. You might need to give it a hand rolling off if it's not rolling off. And let's say there. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. And then let's render that out. So that was pretty decent. Now what happens if we want to keep this how it is? Well what you would do is you would grab all of these tags and you will go to dynamics and set initial state. That means when you go back to the beginning everything should stay the same. As you can see the hole or the dint in the pillow is staying the same and you can actually get rid of the sphere if you wanted um, and everything is just looking pretty cool. So there we go. Now in terms of texturing this um, and unwrapping it that probably will be in another tutorial if you guys want to see that. So if you do want to see that, then make sure you leave a comment letting me know if you want to see it. And that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the um, tutorial, and I hope you learned something from it. If you've got any questions, please leave a, a comment in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.